I'm so sorry. Yeah. Yellow, I forgot. <laughs> I speak loudly, so it's rarely that anyone says to me, please speak up. Um, I guess I, I think maybe we should swing over to Ms. Smith um, next, if you're open to that. And it, it seems to me like a natural follow. No, um, definitely. Um, so thank you. And it's, it's really exciting to be here to talk about what I love the phrase, actually, equity-centered um, development. Uh, I work with the Reinvestment Fund, one of the nation's largest community development financial institutions, um, and our mission, our mission is that to create opportunity for low wealth people and places um, through the innovative and strategic use of capital, data, and public-private partnerships. In other words, you can't do it all by yourself. Um, so we bring to the table bankers and foundations and community leaders and individual investors um, as are to are form our capital base, faith-based institutions. In fact, um, in the early days of the reinvestment fund, um, our investment committee was actually led by a woman who was with the Sister of St. Francis. So just to give you a sense of, you know, I heard this morning, uh, I think it was Natalie who talked about getting that first loan from a, a faith-based institution. And we sometimes forget the important role they play in wealth building. Um, I think as important at the reinvestment fund, we believe firmly in supporting our work uh, through data and information and so that we can understand um, how to invest and what our investment may mean um, in place. Um, this idea of data-driven decision-making really sits at the core of our own work, and we often, through our policy solutions group, consult with others to, to, to frame that. Um, and then we also have actually a, a development company, a nonprofit community development corporation, um, because after some work we did around planning in the city of Baltimore and the Oliver neighborhood, um, we found that someone said it's not just having the plan or the idea, is how you execute. And the community-based organization, Build, who invited us to assist with their planning said, well, now that we've got this plan, um, how do we go get the money, and then who does the building? So I think that idea of ex execution is very important. When Reinvestment Fund was founded in 1985, um, the city of, we are headquartered in Silicon Philadelphia started there, but now we you know, work nationally, but primarily in the mid-Atlantic region. When we were founded, I think Philadelphia was your typical um, post-industrial Rust Belt city um, that has suffered from decades of disinvestment. Um, this was evidenced by thousands, I mean literally mean thousands of abandoned houses and vacant lots, and we had declining property values and concentrated poverty a shrinking tax base, which then results in very um, poor city um, services. So that was the context of that led to the creation of the, the reinvestment fund. Um, as a mission-driven lender, we are constantly thinking about and reflecting on and trying to figure out how can you work diligently to balance reinvestment, growth, and equity. And so I want to share some of our thoughts, but I think really echo some of the things that Hector um, talked about. I think first we begin with this idea that advancing an equity-centered development agenda requires an understanding and needs to be responsive to the specific conditions of a community or a neighborhood. In other words, context matters. One size does not fit all. Philadelphia is different from Phoenix. Boston is not Baltimore. So you really have to understand place. Um, when you get into a place, again, context matters. So your strategy when you're thinking about how you want to abate um, displacement that may grow out of gentrification is going to be very different from a strategy that you may deploy in a place where the last grocery store left 20 years ago and the neighborhood is nothing but vacant and abandoned housing. Um, we also must remember, because a lot of times when we talk about development, we think new, we think building, but I'm a firm believer that equity-centered development also thinks about strategies to preserve, to keep people in place, to that predatory mortgage lending and payday, um, 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 payday loans, this strips 
equity out of communities, so an equity-centered development ought to, and we're going to hear some of these ideas, ought to have strategies that counter that. It helps an elderly homeowner to make repairs to their home because now they're on fixed income. Uh, it may mean thinking about those neighborhood business corridors and how do you support the existing businesses there and making sure that they're the right business that are responsive to the community's desires. And then, of course, there's the, always the public sector, so equity-centered um, development does pay attention to schools. It pays attention to your rec centers and your parks and making sure that there's money available that can be used for renovation. So I think if you get the context right, again, you're going to need that data and information to help guide your decision making. It's one of the reasons why we've invested heavily in data collection and aggregation and have made it available um, to the public at large um, through a tool we call Policy Map. And if you have not seen Policy Map and you want to learn more about your your community, there are, I think, thousands of different types of data sets, everything from employment to health to real estate values that you could access and, and aggregate and disaggregate based on census block or zip code or congressional district. We use it a lot when we come to D.C. to show what's happening in the congressional district. We've also created some diagnostic tools, which I hope I may have an opportunity to show you. The most recent one is what we call a displacement um, rate ratio. And I'm not going to talk about how that tool works, I mean the underlying methodology, but we'll show you how it can paint a picture of where displacement can likely take place. So other core um, components of, of think of equity-centered development, um, Hector had touched on, is this idea that is about both people and place. And so your development strategies should work hard to connect the two together. So if you are going to do a housing development project in a low-income, serious economic distress place, then it really should be tied to some workforce and job training program. In, in Baltimore, our CDC partnered with Jericho, which is a group that trains ex-offenders um, and returning um, um, folks who are returning to the community in some of the de what we call deconstruction, gutting the house work, or where it was the house could not be saved, where it had to be taken down. Um, we also believe that you have to have a table to have conversations, and at that table, you have to have everyone. Um, you have to have the development community. You have to have neighborhood leaders. Um, and, and that table should be such that you can debate and exchange ideas, so that idea of how you can create a welcoming space to have sometimes agreement and honest disagreements, and sometimes within communities, folk can disagree on what is the best path forward. Um, Equity-centered development should strive to build co um, social cohesion and bring people together. And so again, I just want to conclude about this important that is comprehensive, it is holistic, and I'll add one other phrase. I think equity-centered development is contextual. Um, it, it, it really needs to reflect what is happening in the place. And I can you know, talk about more about some specific strategies that we've um, used in Philadelphia. 